Hill. Big story today, the Trump administration pushing forward with another effort to change immigration status on the ground for many in the U.S. This time, it affects Haitian immigrants who were granted temporary protected status back in 2010. Foxside political reporter Ronica Cleary is live at the White House with more on this big announcement. Ronica, what are folks saying out there? Hey, Jim and Sarah. Well, a small protest has gathered out here. But before we speak to some of the people involved in this, I want to give our viewers a little information about what happened. We take you back to 2010, that earthquake that rocked Haiti. It became apparent that it would take years for the nation to rebuild. Now, the United States, they have a program where they grant people in dire situations from other countries what's called temporary protected status. And Haitians were granted that here in the United States during the time it would take. Haiti to rebuild. I want to take you inside what the administration announced today and yesterday that would change that for those Haitians receiving temporary uh, protected status. Now, the deadline is July 22nd, 2019. So the administration said that they gave an 18 month timeline that would allow for a smooth transition, what they're saying would be a smooth transition for those Haitians here in the United States to go back home. Now, it's been reported that. There are nearly 60,000 Haitians who receive TPS here in the United States. Now, as for children of TPS recipients, and this was, you know, we take you back to 2010. If you had a child here, they are citizens, but those parents who are here under TPS would be required to leave under this new policy or announcement, if you will, from the administration. Now, recipients of TPS, they are allowed to apply for other status, though, at this time and during this transition. Uh, other immigrant benefits that they may be uh, independently eligible for outside of TPS. Now, the administration, they released a statement when this announcement was made. They say that the decision to terminate TPS for Haiti was made after a, re a review of the conditions upon which the country's original designations were based. Now, Acting Secretary Duke determined that those extraordinary but temporary conditions caused by the 2010 earthquake no longer exist. So the administration is basically saying those conditions that were caused by the earthquake are no longer there. So I want to introduce you to Jonathan here. Jonathan, you helped organize this protest, and I know you are. You're here actually as a DACA recipient, not as a TPS recipient. But those are all temporary immigration status programs that exist in the United States. You've Spoken to TPS recipients. What's their reaction to this announcement that you can share with our viewers? I think people are, well, first of all, thank you so much for being here for the opportunity. I think our folks are heartbroken, right? They're grateful that they have an opportunity to, to have 18 more months to fight to get because something. Because they were pushing for that 18 month extension. Yeah, so they got that 18 month, but it, they got it with an end, to, with uh, a plan to end the program at the end. So we wanted to be able to codify something that actually it's not able to, that it's able to be. The law, right? Because it is temporary. Right, and you, as a dreamer, TPS recipients, there are TPS recipients in this country from other countries as well. These are all temporary programs for people in this country. Uh, you've talked to people in this crowd tonight about solutions, things they'd like to see. What are ideas that you guys are bringing forth tonight? If people disagree with this decision from the administration, I think what it's really important to remember is that the system is broken. That the system doesn't allow people who are currently TPS or DACA to be able to actually you know, apply for legal permanent resident status. So we're pushing for bills that would codify that protection, that would codify that a path for people to become documented in the way that they want to be. All right, Jonathan, thank you for sharing with us a little of your story and experience tonight. Thank you so much. They're bringing crime, they're bringing drugs, they're physically unclean, they're a threat to women. And children. Yep, illegal immigration is causing tremendous problems in Mexico. That's tonight's reality check. Citizens in the southern Mexican city of Tapachula are complaining that illegal aliens from Central America are wrecking their town. In addition to familiar problems like gangs and violent crime, the people of Tapachula are reporting incidents of sexual aggression and migrants defecating in public. Some residents say the danger is so great to them, they're afraid to leave their homes. The problem is bigger now than it has been because more migrants are choosing to end their journey in Mexico rather than travel all the way to the U.S., where the Trump administration seems more likely to catch and deport them. Well, now that illegal aliens are staying in their country, Mexicans are discovering there is a downside to open borders. What the Mexicans may be lacking is the relentless sensitivity training most of us get in school and from the media and the Democratic Party. 
Once they learn that their complaints are not legitimate, but instead manifestations of systemic racism and white privilege, they'll stop whining and learn to appreciate people sneaking into their countries and using the streets as a latrine. Maybe Vicente Fox will tell them that. Good luck. Well, for the past seven years, thousands of Haitian immigrants have enjoyed a special temporary protected status due to an earthquake in that country in 2010. The Trump administration is reviewing whether to end the status it allowed any Haitian president in this country when the earthquake hit to avoid returning home. The administration is also conducting a review of any crimes committed by Haitian immigrants who benefit from this special status. Steve Forrester is an immigration policy coordinator at the Institute for Justice and Democracy in Haiti. He says the president's review demonizes Haitians, and he joins us tonight. Mr. Forrester, thanks for coming on. Thank you very much for having me. I think most Haitian immigrants are great, met a lot of them, work hard, seem to do well. Some are not great, some are criminals. Why is it demonizing Haitians to find out who's who? Well, basically, it's a red herring. And the reason is that the temporary protected status statute itself disqualifies criminals. You have to uh, put in your fingerprints for the FBI to check. And um, uh, under the law, uh, people who, have cr who are criminals are disqualified. Um, so, so it's really a complete red herring to well, no, look well, beyond it because it already self, uh, is self-enacting uh, that criminals aren't in the TPS population. But what about people who have been convicted of crimes or charged with crimes while in the United States? I mean, so those, well, I mean, we have, done, what's wrong with assessing, in other words, how these people they do have assess done it. Yes. once they've come here? Well, the, the Trump administration is merely says we'd like to assess it more. Yep. I don't know why knowing more they, is a bad thing. Well, they're not really uh, trying to do that because every 18 months they judge, are the conditions sufficiently dire in the country? And Haiti's had a sledge, series of sledgehammer blows. The earthquake in 2010. Uh, the worst in 200 years, 250,000 people killed, most of Port-au-Prince destroyed. Still today, 50,000 right. people living in tent cities. Then you had, a, seven months ago, Hurricane Matthew, which destroyed much of the, of, of, of the southern peninsula, about a quarter of the country. It destroyed crops, livestock, left, affected two million people, okay, I mean, and I, left Haiti I'm with a food insecurity crisis. I'm familiar with the, the litany of now. disasters, and I'm, again, I feel sorry for right. Haiti, the poorest country in the hemisphere. It's been in tough shape for 200 years, but that's not answering my question, which is, this is not Haiti, it's they the United States, yes. and don't American citizens have the right to assess whether the presence of people from any country, including Haiti, is good for us? Why is that a bad but that's, thing? Right. Well, they, every 18 months, people have to submit their fingerprints, so there is a check by the FBI every 18 months, and criminals are not allowed to get TPS. Secondly, extending TPS is in the national security interest of the United States, sending 50,000 people back to Haiti whose remittances help perhaps as many as 500,000 people in Haiti. When you've got a Haitian government that is reeling from a cholera epidemic that is completely unchecked, you know, the UN for six years wouldn't take responsibility. They've raised only two million of the 400 okay, okay, million okay. dollars. Wait, hold, hold on. And Wait, what so I'm so saying is... going to have to be more precise. Why is it... I understand why it's in Haiti's interest to have American dollars flow to it. And we've sent billions from the Treasury over there as well, as you know. But why is it in our national security interest to keep tens of thousands of Haitians here? I don't understand that at all. Because to destabilize Haiti, and that's why you've got Republicans joining Democrats. Just today, Ms. Representative Donovan, chair of the uh, sub -prepa Emergency Preparedness Subcommittee of Homeland Security, a Republican, came out for this, saying it would hurt the U.S. economy and destabilize Haiti. Destabilizing Haiti is no good because you've got a history of people, when they're desperate because of the conditions, having taken to the seas, then Coast Guard interdiction has to occur. So it makes absolutely no sense well, so, for us so wait, to I'm, I'm just, First of all, just because some Republican is for it doesn't actually mean anything. It's not a data point. It's not evidence that the position is true. It's, it's but they're just not judging the this on the, on the merits. Okay, okay, but I'm just trying to figure they're out your reasoning here. You're saying that if we don't allow more Haitians to come and the ones who are here are ready to stay, that this is nothing about that it'll be bad for it. Haiti. Okay, but why isn't our national security interest? People throw that stuff out there, and I just want you to explain it in a way our viewers can understand, because I'm legitimately confused. These people have been here seven to 15 years because they were here before the earthquake of 2010. They've been hardworking people, make, having, uh, uh, sending money back. 
and remittances are the chief form of foreign aid 1.3 billion from the US alone in 2015 it's estimated that 250 to 500,000 people depend on those remittances now we're not saying that's a I'm reason sure. to extend I'm sure that's the all reason, true no, but Chuck why it. is that good for if, America? If you, That's if, what I'm just missing. No one ever factors that in. I know it's great for Haiti, and I like Haiti, and I like Haitians. But isn't it fair to say what is in it for our well, country, ask, which has massive ask, unemployment and all these problems? Like, why is this good for ask, us? And you can't explain it. Right. Ask the Disney company in Orlando, which has come out for TPS, because they say about 500 of their workers would be affected. It would decimate families here and in Haiti, and the destabilization shouldn't be dismissed. You've got a Haitian government that's new, that has asked for this to be extended because they say right now things are too precarious because right. of the cholera epidemic that's affected a million okay. people. Hurricane Matthew seven months ago. The point is that to send 50,000 people back on top of not being able to replace the yeah, money it. they send. <clears throat> right. Will the, be the Disney might the have country. to pay more to its workers here in the United States, and we wouldn't want that. Uh, Steve, thanks a lot for coming on.